Welcome to the League of Nerds comic book segment number 122. I'm John Cooney here to talk to you about new comics released the 21st of May 2014, beginning as usual with my first five, meaning these are the first five books I intend to read this week, and I'll give you a little more depth on them, starting with at number one, Invincible number 111. The Walking Dead creator Robert Kirkman writes Invincible, a new beginning for Invincible as things take a turn down a dark path. Everything changes as Invincible is betrayed by one of his own. You won't want to miss this explosive issue, number 111. It packs the punch of three relaunch number one issues in one book. Series writer Robert Kirkman explained the new direction, quote, If The Walking Dead is the zombie movie that never ends, Invincible is the superhero movie that never ends. Like The Walking Dead, it takes a well-worn genre and puts a new spin on it, raising the stakes and treating things a little more seriously than they otherwise are. With these new issues, starting with 111, we're really going to be ramping up those elements of the series to their highest peak. I don't think people are prepared for all the lines we're going to cross and not look back. This really is an exciting time to be an Invincible fan. Close quote. Of course, last issue concluded with a very controversial ending. I won't spoil it for those who haven't read it, but it's made the book very hard to find and has caused the value to skyrocket. At number two, we've got Saga number 19, Saga Returns, new planet, new adversaries, and a very new direction, all from the same old Hugo Award-winning team. Back after an almost four-month break, series writer Brian K. Vaughn was initially concerned about their schedule. Quote, Fiona and I were a little worried how readers and retailers would react to taking a hiatus every six issues, but I'm so grateful that everyone's been supportive. I think this schedule has been a huge part of the reason that Saga is selling significantly more at number 18 than it was with number one. Image is cool enough to put out extremely reasonably priced collections almost immediately after an arc ends, and a lot of those trade readers are apparently then switching to reading us in regular issues as soon as we return monthly. Obviously, it's a model that's worked well in other media. I was stupidly slow to join the Breaking Bad train, so I watched the first three seasons on DVD, but when the fourth season started, there was no way I wasn't watching each episode live as it aired. Close quote. He went on to say the next six issues, quote, are going to be very, very different from anything that's come before. It's a story about money, among other subjects, that terrify new parents, close quote. As for issue 19 in particular, Vaughn said, quote, it's a doozy. You're either going to think it was totally worth the wait or cancel your pull list subscription on Impact, close quote. At number three, we've got Uncanny X-Men number 21, The Cyclops Revolution Marches On, who is the mysterious figure building Sentinels for S.H.I.E.L.D., Find out what happened to Dazzler since Mystique took her down back in Uncanny X-Men number 9. Series editor Mike Martz laid out what we can expect from the series. Quote, We're still following the repercussions of the X-Men's fierce battle against S.H.I.E.L.D. and everything that happened there with Maria Hill. We'll also be following the storyline of Mystique and Sabretooth and what they've been up to, and expect Dazzler's role in the X-Books to take a dramatic change towards the unexpected. Close quote. At number 4, we've got Amazing Spider-Man number 2. Electro's power is out of control, and only one person can fix it, the superior Spider-Man. Wait, this book's the amazing Spider-Man now, so we're probably out of luck. Plus that thing that freaked you out last issue? There's more on that. The return of you-know-who? There's much more on that. Action, drama, suspense? There's more of everything. Senior editor Nick Lowe spoke out about issue number two specifically when responding to questions about Anna Maria. Quote, she will continue to be a major character in Spider-Man's life. Peter certainly has some splaining to do, as you can see at the end of the first issue. She's been through a lot, and she doesn't even know the half of it yet. Anna Maria is going to be a major supporting character in the book moving forward. She's a big part of issue number two. She's a big part of issue number three, and she'll continue to be a big part of the series. I don't want to give too much away, but there's some really cool things that Dan has planned for her. But the first thing that they're going to have to deal with is what happened. How much is Peter going to explain? Is he going to tell her the truth or give her some white lie to color it in some way? What about the ring? I hope Spidey fans enjoy waiting for issue number two. Close quote. And at number five, we've got Forever Evil number seven of seven. It's evil versus evil and the shocking Take No Prisoners conclusion to Forever Evil. What will be the fate of Lex Luthor and his Injustice League? Who will live and who will die? Why is the hooded man the most feared being from the Syndicate's world? Do not miss this startling finale that will leave the DC Universe reeling and reveal the secrets to the future. After a two-month delay that's already generated some continuity issues that I discussed, okay, more like ranted about previously in segment number 118, will the conclusion live up to the hype of series writer Jeff Johns' promises? Quote, The first phase of the New 52 is drawing to a close as Forever Evil wraps up, a new phase begins, one that will see the introduction and reintroduction of a lot of characters, concepts, and a decidedly new center to the DC Universe. Keep your eyes on Lex. He's the one to watch. Close quote. 
Rounding out the top 10 at number 6, we've got Powers Bureau number 10. Walker and Pilgrim continue their investigation into the death of a true American icon and uncover one of the darkest, most fascinating secrets of American superpower history. From the Eisner Award-winning team of Bendis and Oming comes another shocking chapter of one of the most successful independent comics of its generation. At number 7, we've got all-new X-Factor number 8. One of the country's most outspoken anti-mutant leaders has a mutant daughter. It's up to X-Factor to rescue this young girl from her father. Serval Industries brings you the heroes you need in any situation. At number 8, we've got Justice League number 30. It all changes here with the first chapter of Injustice League. The next era of the Justice League begins as heroes quit, villains join, and the Justice League roster you've never seen before emerges. Led by the world's greatest hero, Lex Luthor. As the dust settles and the bodies are buried, the violent consequences of forever evil must be dealt with, while a mysterious new force sets its target on the League. But is this force friend or enemy? And why does he want Luther dead? If you ask Batman, it's a long list. At number 9, we've got Elektra number 2. Elektra braves the dangers of Monster Island and a rival assassin in her search for the elusive assassin known as Cape Crow. The psychotic killer Bloody Lips closes in on Marvel's deadliest femme fatale. Hayden Blackman and Mike Del Mundo bring you a hauntingly beautiful tale about honor and redemption. And at number 10, we've got Miracle Man number 6. Book 2, The Red King Syndrome begins. The twisted genius who created Miracle Man initiates a long-held plan that threatens Miracle Man's family. The origins of Dr. Emil Gargunza, his project Zarathustra, are revealed. Issue number 6 includes material originally presented in Warrior number 16 through 18, plus bonus material. For the best of the rest from DC, we've got Batman and Frankenstein number 31. The hunt for Robin continues. Batman is on the trail of Ra's al Ghul in the hopes of recovering the stolen bodies of Damien and Talia. But when all leads grow cold, he'll need to call in help. Someone who can go where no bat has gone before. This looks like a job for... Frankenstein? Next, we've got Batman Eternal number 7. New players enter the gang war that's setting Gotham City ablaze. We've also got Birds of Prey number 31. In the aftermath of the battle between Mother Eve and Ra's al Ghul, the birds must decide what path they will take next and whether they'll take it all together. And who exactly are the children of Eve? Next, we've got Black Canary and Zatanna Bloodspell hardcover. Two of the DC Universe's brightest stars joined forces in this original graphic novel. A year ago, Black Canary infiltrated a gang of female criminals set to pull a dangerous heist at a Las Vegas casino. Its leader was skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat and more than a passing interest in black magic. Rather than be captured by Canary or the law, she went to her death, vowing to get revenge on Canary. Now, one year later, death stalks those gang members, and Canary must turn to her friend Zatanna to help investigate. Investigate. This title also includes a special sketchbook section. We've also got Harley Quinn number 6. Harley makes a new friend, and he happens to be a murderous cyborg who's on a rampage in search of retribution. Fun! Next we have Justice League of America number 14. In the wake of Forever Evil, the Justice League of America's mission has come to an end. So where do they go from here? No one's survival is assured. And we have New 52 Futures End number 3. Did Firestorm kill a member of the Justice League? Who is watching Batman Beyond, and why is Frankenstein living in an igloo? From Marvel Comics, we've got Amazing X-Men number 7, guest starring The Amazing Spider-Man. Iceman, Firestar, and Spider-Man renew their amazing friendship to save New York City. Guest issue by Catherine Eminen and Paco Medina. Next, we have Avengers World number 6. The Avengers launch a desperate rescue mission. Hyperion confronts the man who pulled him back from the nothing between universes in the birth of AIM Empire, a glimpse of a lost world. We've also got Daredevil number 3, the Owl is back, but old enemies aren't nearly as much of a problem for Matt Murdock as his new friend, the Shroud. Kristen and Matt are sharing a very volatile secret, who will be the first to crack? Next we have Hulk number 3, Banner DOA gets ready to take you into a new twist in Hulk history. Banner goes to a dark place and could take the Avengers with him. Only Hulk can save Banner, but will he? After last issue's surprise resurrection, a new threat enters the scene. We've also got Magneto number 4, Profile of a Supremacist. In the most brutal issue yet of this new noir horror series, Magneto ruthlessly dismantles the latest threat to mutant kind, and we gain a greater understanding of why his mission is so important to him. Next we have Nova number 17, Sam is back from outer space and discovers his greatest threat right on his doorstep. When the Alexander home is threatened, this time there may not be anything that Nova can do to help out. We've also got Original Sin number 2 of 8, Who Holds the Eye? Who Knows Its Secrets? The Cosmic Manhunt for the Watcher's Killer continues. 
more bodies are discovered, the killer's trail leads to the far corners of the universe and beyond, and just when Nick Fury and the Avengers think they've cornered their murderer, everything explodes, unleashing the Marvel Universe's greatest secrets. Next we have Ultimate FF number 2, Palace of the Brine part 1 of 2, a lavish vacation spot for the super rich suddenly goes dark with hundreds missing, and the only suspect is an old frenemy of the Fantastic Four. Meanwhile, the truth of the team's mysterious fourth member spells doom for another member of the team. We've also got Wolverine in the X-Men number 4, Tomorrow Never Learns, Part 3. Storm, Idy, and the kids make a stand against the Phoenix Corporation while Wolverine clings to life. Meanwhile, Quentin Quire, on the run, finds a new ally in... Cyclops? Jason Latour and Mahmoud Azrar continue with the all-new Marvel Now smash hit. And we have X-Men number 14. The Jean Grey school is under attack, leaving a young X-Man dead on the school's front lawn. Jubilee's worst nightmare has come to pass, and the future is being rewritten. Clay Mann joins Brian Wood for a terrifying new chapter in X-Men history. From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Magnus Robot Fighter number 3. How do you kill a robot fighter? Send a human. Lasia Klein, Human Hunter. Her guns are huge, her car is fast, her theme music is awesome. How is Magnus possibly going to survive against an opponent with no robot parts? It's Flesh and Blood Brawling, brought to you by Fred Van Lint and Corey Smith. From Image Comics, we've got MPH number 1 of 5. The all-new Miller World Universe kicks into high gear with the launch of Miller and Fergredo's Fast and Furious miniseries. When a group of hard luck teens in Motor City stumble upon a street drug called MPH, they gain the power of super speed. Will they use it to save the world? Hell no. Not when there's dollar dollar bills to be had, y'all. A high-octane urban adventure, MPH brings you super speed like you've never seen before. And we've got Rocket Girl number 5, Only the Good, the hard-hitting conclusion of the first story arc. Teen time cop to young Johansson uncovers a thing or two about both New York cities, the connection between past and future, and the secrets that people don't even know they keep. Growing up is hard to do, and sometimes it proves to be impossible. And from Valiant Entertainment, we've got XO Man of War number 25. Valiant First delivers another must-read milestone this May with the blockbuster 48-page celebration of XO Man of War's 25th issue and an essential introduction to the comic book event of 2014, Armor Hunters. Find out why the galaxy's most feared team of hunter killers have journeyed across the stars to destroy the XO Man of War armor and the Earth along with it in Armor Hunters Part Zero by Robert Venditti and Diego Bernard. Then revisit the roots of Eric of Dacia's transformation from Visigoth Conqueror into the 21st century's alien armored guardian, as told by Robert Venditti and J.G. Jones. Plus, all new tales of the XO Man of War from Peter Milligan and Brian Hitch, Justin Jordan and Rafer Roberts, and much, much more. Out in trades this week, we've got Batgirl Volume 3, Death of the Family trade paperback. Batgirl stars in these epics from 14 through 19 of her monthly series, plus Batman number 17, Batgirl Annual number 1, and a story from Young Romance number 1, all spinning out of Death of the Family. The Joker is back, and Barbara Gordon must confront her past as she deals with the crazed criminal responsible for crippling her. Plus, once the dust settles, Barbara must deal with her family demons as her psychotic brother James Jr. comes after her. Next, we have Ex Machina Volume 2 trade paperback. In this new title featuring issues 12 through 20 of the hit series, along with Ex Machina Special 1 and 2, Mayor Mitchell Hunter must make a difficult decision about his own future, becomes a part of a shocking trial complicated by the unexpected arrival of an all-new superhero, and leaves New York City for the first time since his election to embark on a strange adventure. We've also got all-new X-Men Volume 3, Out of Their Depth, trade paperback. The time-displaced young X-Men continue to adjust to a present day that's simultaneously more awe-inspiring and more disturbing than any future the young heroes had ever imagined for themselves. As Jean Grey pushes her powers to the limit, shaking her and the rest of the X-Men to the core, one of the young X-Men breaks rank and leaves to join the adult Cyclops and his revolutionary crew. And when Mastermind targets the young Jean, will history repeat itself? Plus, when the teens find themselves face-to-face -face with the Uncanny Avengers, young Cyclops meets the adult version of his brother he thought he'd never see again. They never warned us about this sort of thing in temporal mechanics class. Acclaimed writer Brian Michael Bendis further defines the future and the past of the X-Men, collecting all-new X-Men number 11 through 15. And we have X-Factor by Peter David, the Complete Collection Volume 2 trade paperback. As X-Factor unloads their hopes, fears, and darkest secrets to Doc Sampson, Jamie Maddox decides to gather up his stray dupes. The trouble is, two don't want to go quietly, the married priest and the agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. And when Hydra comes calling, will Jamie become their secret weapon? 
With Mutant Town under siege thanks to the terrorist XL, X Factor races the clock to keep every former mutant from being imprisoned. What an awful time for the isolationists to strike. Then, after the events of Messiah Complex, X Factor is a shambles. Jamie is a basket case, Wolf's Bane quits but won't say why, and Layla is trapped in the future in the middle of the Summer's Rebellion. Plus, Quicksilver's life takes a dramatic turn. Collecting X Factor number 13 through 24 and 28 through 32, X Factor The Quick and the Dead number 1, and X Factor Special Layla Miller number 1. Okay, so that's just a few of my favorite books out this week. There's still plenty of others available. I broke out all the Marvel titles this week in their own video, as well as a separate video for all of DC, and even a video with the top independent publishers. You can find them all on my YouTube channel at he's got issues.com. And we'll also have the links up on the League of Nerds.com, our Facebook page, so be sure to like us there too. And of course, you can follow everything I'm reading on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, or Twitter. You can find links to everything in the About section at he's got issues.com. And a reminder that both He's Got Issues and the League of Nerds are proud members of the Comics Podcast Network. So until next week, I'm John Cooney, and I've got issues.